Hello and welcome to another video. Today's topic is parametric resizing of fairly complex structures and how to save even more time with the new custom joints feature. Here we see the assembly of a framework truss where the short vertical and diagonal members have been inserted as a subassembly using a combination of patterns and equations. This sounds unusual at first, but we'll see the benefits in a moment. The column on the right is already in place and the connection between the upper cord and the column has already been inserted and saved as a custom joint to keep the video short. Next, I insert the second column using the beams on lines feature. Of course, the profile is rotated by 90 degrees and the parallel offset is set to bottom, so that the column is flush with the end of the profile. Confirm and the whole construction begins to look more complete. We continue with the end plate connection on the lower cord. Using the end plate tool, we select the beam, then the face to which we want it to connect, and immediately get a preview. By the way, you can change the type of end plate here in the presets. It's now one with four bolts, but that's not a problem either, you can just change it back to two columns down here. Confirm and the end plate connection will be added as well. Let's add some haunches. Just select the appropriate faces with the haunch tool. I like this shape and size, so we can confirm it right away. Solid Steel always remembers the last used settings, and of course you can set all the parameters for the haunches as you like. Now I do the same on the other side. Done. In the column I want to add some ribs, so I select the profile with the rib tool and define the reference edge for the alignment. As you can see, I didn't select the single-sided option, so another rib was placed on the opposite side in just one step. Creating the connection was very fast using Solid Steel's features. To further speed up the workflow for recurring joints, we now use the custom joints feature that has been available since Solid Steel Parametric version 5. Using the Create Custom Joint function, we add the joint we just created to the database by selecting the involved profiles and all components. Now all we have to do is give the new custom joint a name and confirm the component names. The new custom joint is now available in the database and can be used from now on whenever the installation situation fits. Let's try it right away. I had already saved the upper joint as a custom joint, so we just have to select the two profiles and immediately get a preview including the bolting. The pre-selection is also correctly set to traverse upper, so we can confirm right away. In the same way, we will now add the lower connection, again selecting both profiles. We get the preview of the last joint because Solid Steel has remembered the last setting used and the installation situation would also fit here. So now we just select the matching lower joint, get the new preview and we can confirm. Done. That's convenient, isn't it? Now let's look at the advantages of using patterns in combination with equations. You know how it is, just when you are done with the design, an email comes from the customer who has made a mistake with the dimensions and wants changes. No problem, we open the equations, enter a larger width, let's say 7 meters, and a smaller height, let's say 0.8 meters, and press OK. This looks quite chaotic now, we fix the assembly with a click on update. Now this takes a few seconds. But a lot happens and compared to changing it manually, this is of course something like the speed of light. The real time was 17 seconds on my computer. In the result we see now that length, height, angle of the diagonals etc have changed. The dimension changes were now in the first example still relatively close to the original dimensions. Now let's try what happens if we are less restrained. We simply change the width to 11 meters more than twice the width of the original construction, confirm the new equation first with OK, and then start the assembly update again. This again takes a few seconds, which I have sped up a bit in the video. As a result, we now see that not only the spacing of the vertical beams has changed, but also their number. This can all be controlled in a practical way using the parameters within the equations and adjusted to your own liking. Now that we have adjusted the dimensions, we of course want to export a parts list with all the details. To do this, we first perform an update of the position numbers in the task pane. The update also detects geometrically identical parts, so that identical parts also receive identical position numbers. 
after updating the part numbers, we also update the metadata, which writes all the position number information to each part's custom properties. Now we are ready to export the bomb. We select a suitable template from the list, assign a storage path and file name, and confirm. In addition to the supplied templates, we can of course create our own parts list templates. The finished bill of materials is already available as an Excel file in the selected location. In the bolt list, all required bolts, washers and nuts are listed by type and quantity. In the saw list all profiles are listed with exact lengths. There is a structure list, a beam list, a sheet list and the quantity list, which summarizes the entire construction. Of course, solid steel parametric supports you even further, for example with the export of NC data. But this is where I end today's video. Feel free to check out our other videos to discover more of Solid Steel Parametrics features. Thank you for watching and don't hesitate to contact us if you have any questions. See you next time.